good morning and welcome to my channel relatively new to this whole YouTube thing still so uh, I'm hoping this video has been a little better than my other ones taken with a shaky camera anyway my name is Anza Langer and I am here to do a quick uh, thoughts and impressions on this Sun Tour fork here that came on a bike that I acquired this past winter um, a bike by the way the link is below that I did a first impressions video on that people have been bugging me about hey have you ridden it give us a better you know idea of what the bike is like and that kind of thing the problem is I bought it in December we were hit by snow all winter um, and uh, with work and snow and everything else haven't had a chance to get it out except for the past like month or two here and um, I've given the bike I've got 12 rides under the belt of the bike and so now I'll have a video follow-up video on the the uh, bike itself but anyway, I wanted to talk about this Sun Tour shock that came on the bike stock. So the story on the bike is, is that uh, a co-worker had bought it from Fazari. It's a Fazari uh, Wikipeak, which is their entry-level full suspension trail bike. And uh, because he wanted to get into mountain biking. And he rode it exactly three times and decided mountain biking wasn't for him. <clears throat> so it was past his 30-day return and he wanted to offload it and so I bought it from him for half price. Um, I gave a first impressions video just a quick you know this is the bike it comes with basic Diori components it's entry level you know that kind of thing and then uh, I promised to do a review later which is coming up. However um, after the, about the first six rides that I took and I've taken like a between a dozen I think about 13 rides on it um, after the first six rides, I decided I was going to upgrade the fork. Um, not that there's anything wrong with this one, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it's just that I wanted something with a little more travel. Okay, and this comes, this comes as a 130 millimeter travel fork, the way it's set up now. Um, I had a uh, Manitou Machete 150 millimeter travel that I was going to put on there, but I decided to save that for another project and stick with Sun Tour. The reason why I decided to stick with Sun Tour is I had never used Sun Tour before. Um, a little bit of background on me is that I started mountain biking in 96 and between 98 and 2007 I did a lot of events and a lot of races both downhill and cross country. Um, no I was not sponsored, no I'm not some big name, no I didn't podium you know every time I went to a race or anything. Um, but I just traveled up and down the West Coast and went to different events during mountain bike season and whatnot. And back in the day, um, between 98 and 2007, I strictly used Rock Shocks or Merzoki. That was it. I don't think Fox was really out back then for mountain bike forks. I don't think they hit the scenes till the early 2000s. Um, I, I'm not an expert on that, so don't quote me on that or don't comment and go, hey, that's not the history of Fox Forks. Uh, <laughs> but I know when I first started, back in 96 uh, Fox really wasn't on the scene for mountain biking um, as far as I know the big names were Marzocchi and Rock Shocks back then Manitou was on the scene back then um, just probably not as popular anyway getting off topic here so my first this is my first experience with Sun Tour I know Sun Tour's got a bad reputation because they also make mountain bike forks um, and not very good ones for uh, uh, low budget uh, big box store bikes like Walmart and Sam's Club and that kind of stuff. Um, so it was, it was interesting. I mean, I knew they made higher end forks, but I'd never ridden one. I didn't know many people that use them. So when I first got the bike, I researched everything that they spec'd it out with. And this was one of the things I researched. And I come to find out that actually Sun Tour has a pretty good following and it's growing um, for their higher end uh, forks. Um, this particular fork that they spec down on the bike, because it is their, it is Fazari's entry level, uh, the Wikipeak is their entry level full suspension bike. Um, this fork here is pretty much there on the line. So you got you got a line, and everything down below is is. Um, budget big box forks and everything above the line you slowly get higher and higher and higher till the top of the line forks that they make and this one here is like right on the line 
Um, this is the Sun Tour XCR 34 Air Boost. And uh, the 34 stands for 34 millimeter stanchions. It is an air fork. And depending on the website you go to, um, or depending on where you look up information on this fork, they list it as either a 100, 120, or 130 millimeter fork, which is all adjustable, or they list it as a 120, 130, 140 millimeter fork. Um, prices vary too. I've seen them as high as 400 bucks, I've, but um, you can get them directly from Sun Tour for 299, which is more where I think a shock of this of of this uh, quality should be right around the the $300, maybe maybe $250 mark. Um, <clears throat> so this fork's like right on the line. And so I, I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna switch out the fork right away when I got the bike. I says, I'm gonna give Sun Tour a try because as I did my research, like I said, I found out that Sun Tour actually has a pretty big following with their higher end forks and it's growing. And a lot of budget conscious riders, um, people do, who don't have the disposable income to buy the latest, greatest Fox 36 or whatever, um, they turn to Sun Tour for decent quality forks and an affordable price. And uh, so that's kind of how I wanted to kind of look at this. Um, I have seven bikes in my stable. Uh, most of them are specced out with top of the line gear. Um, I don't want to cause a fight here on YouTube and so I don't need a bunch of comments. My personal opinion is I like Fox products, okay? I think Fox makes a good fork. I think they're overpriced and put too much hype behind their name. It's like if you're in high school and you're playing basketball, sure, you can get those Jordans, and but there's a whole lot of comparable basketball shoes that you can use that don't cost as much as Jordans because you're paying mostly for the Jordan name. And I think Fox is at that point where you're paying a lot for the Fox name. Um, not that they don't make a good product, I think they absolutely do. I just think that they're a little overpriced, um, and I think part of that is because of the hype behind their name. And RockShox, they've kind of gotten like that too on some of their stuff, but anyway, that's a conversation for another video. So this particular fork here, um, my first time using Sun Tour, some features I'd like to point out. Um, it is an air fork. It does have lockout. Um, two of the features I really like on it, or I guess really one of uh, the first one's going to be the Q lock system. Okay, and that's this little system here for the 15 millimeter through axle um, where you just push this in and those little prongs go down, it slides right out. No unscrewing, no messing around. Now, on other, other reviews of Sun Tour forks, I hear a lot of people say if a lot of mud or dirt or something gets up in there, the prongs don't close right. Haven't experienced that yet. Um, if that's the case, I can understand why. They think it's a pain in the ass, but um, I've gone on a couple of muddy rides. Believe me, I cleaned up this fork. It wasn't this clean when I took it off the bike. Um, and it gets really wet here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I've gotten mud and stuff in there. I just I just gave it, I took my, my uh, air compressor and I just blew it out real quick and uh, it still works fine. So I haven't experienced that yet. The other feature I'd like to point out, and I know there's other other suspension makers that do this, but I really like the fact that for an entry level, for I would say a decent entry level fork for its price range, um, even though it says 29 boost on here, you can actually use this for both 29 and 27.5. Uh, the bike that it came on, the bike that it's specced with, is a 27.5 plus bike. So I like the fact that, that, that you can do this, and I'm sure you can do it with most forks, I just think this is a pretty good feature on a uh, sub $300 suspension fork. Okay, and you've got a lockout up here, which is set up so you can add a remote to it. And then over here, you know, you got your, your air. Okay, so let me back this up here. So those are two of the features I really like. Um, the styling is nice. I do like the styling. Um, I don't uh, don't particularly care that it's stickers and and not paint, but you know even even my Rock Shocks like my my Reba Tie RL and things like that, um, they have stickers that peel off and whatnot. Um, 
But uh, so this fork is specced from Fazari as being set up for 130 millimeter. To change the travel on these, you do have to take it apart. Um, I didn't take it apart to see if you could actually bring it up to 140. So I don't know um, what the deal is, why the different uh, ratings on different websites, depending on where you go. Um, one of the things I will show you is that, let me turn this around here. Although they put this on a cross country trail bike, <laughs> the sticker actually says leisure cross country do not use for free ride downhill dirt jump or any hard riding and I'll tell you why I think that's funny um, so the first like uh, five or six rides I took on the bike was with this fork and I um, took it on various trails I took it on the um, the uh, adventure trail that we have up here, part of the uh, Olympic um, National Park trails. Um, there's an adventure trail out on uh, Highway 112 that I took it on. And it's got a lot of uh, very twisty, very fast flowing single track with uh, lots of rocks and roots and stuff like that. Not a lot of drops or anything, just, you know, just fast flowing single track. Then I took it over to Dry Hill which has a lot of downhill trails um, and that that actually that course is actually used for the Northwest Cup and we get riders from all over the country and all over the world um, that ride that series of racing out there and I'm a heavier rider now um, when I first started mountain biking in 96 I was just out of the army I was 190 pounds and ripped I mean I had like the lowest body fat index in my life um, but uh, now I'm uh, 230 pounds and I'm a lot heavier. And so I took it out to Dry Hill and was doing drop-offs, nothing major. I'm old and I don't heal like I used to. Um, but um, I took this fork, I was doing like, you know, little from two to four foot drop-offs, things like that on it. Um, going over roots, rocks and things like that this this fork just absorbs them it's like um, I would I would surprisingly and I know a lot of people who don't like Sun Tour are gonna you know say oh their forks are garbage but I gotta say it was almost like I had a Cadillac out there this thing was just soaking it up and it was taking it especially with my 230 pounds on it so I can tell you that the fork operates buttery smooth. One of the things I've seen on other reviews, people talk about um, it making sucking noises and clicking noises. Didn't experience that at all. Then I thought maybe it was people who were reviewing them after having them for a while, but come to find out that most of the reviews I was reading that talked about that kind of noise um, were people who just, you know, the first couple rides um, had no issues with that at all. Um, performed flawlessly smooth as butter, um, really nice. A couple of the drops, um, it almost felt like it was going to bottom out, but didn't. Um, I'm guessing that's because the 130 millimeters of travel and then my fat ass being on the bike. Um, but no, I didn't, I didn't have any trouble with it. And I really like, I really like the fork. So as first impressions, my first time riding and keeping in mind that it's a, a, uh, entry level, uh, entry level of real mountain biking, I guess, um, type fork, not like a big box, the ones they stick on the big box forks. Um, it, it performed really, really well. I was really impressed. I, um, it's impressed so much as I was impressed so much by how it performed as a sub $300 shock that, uh, that is the reason why I decided not to put that Manitou machete on there and, uh, buy another Sun Tour fork, but one higher up on the food chain um, to try that out. So some of the complaints I have about the fork, um, I've told you a couple things I like. Um, one of the things you can see here, right here, the rebound. Now the rebound does work. Um, there are some forks, even Rock Shocks has some, Manitou um, has some that, uh, that the rebound, it like it doesn't do anything or barely does anything 
Um, this here, the rebound does work, but the range of the of the rebound um, kind of leaves a little to be desired. Um, it, uh, yeah, it, it does work. I mean, that's all I can really say. I just like a greater range of rebound than what it offers. Um, the 51 millimeter offset is something new uh, to me. Usually I go with a shorter offset, um, but, uh, but it seemed to work fine. I felt comfortable on the bike. Um, so if, if you know anything about Fazari, you know that they, um, they uh, take your measurements. They, they do your height, your weight, your uh, inseam, your arm, arm length, your shoulder uh, spread, all that kind of stuff. And then they, they do a 23 point setup for the bike. So the guy I got it from, the only difference between him and I is because we're the same height, same shoulders, everything, is that I'm about 50 pounds heavier than him. That was the only deal. Um, so I did feel, feel real comfortable on the bike uh, the way they had it set up. Um, some of the other features on this fork that I do like is that um, you can, you can, uh, it has the, the, uh, <clears throat> the mounts, um, the screw mounts for the fender. You can buy the aftermarket fender here and get those in there and uh, things like that. I like, uh, I like uh, the stanchions. They seem really solid. Didn't feel a lot of flex in there, which was good. Um, so all in all, it was a good experience with this fork. Now, I know you're going to ask, well, if you like the fork, why did you change it? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, in my stable of bikes, I have a 29 um, set up for cross-country trail. I have um, a couple of hardtails, things like that. Um, I don't downhill anymore, but um, and all my downhill stuff is gone. I don't do anything with you know long travel or anything like that anymore. Um, I basically mountain bike now just to enjoy myself. And I know you can enjoy yourself doing downhill, but I, I, I'm at the point where I want bikes to do a little bit of everything. Um, the reason I changed it was because I'm a heavier rider, and some of the trails I ride are pretty gnarly, and I, I wanted something a little bit. Uh, beefier with a little more travel. Um, I like my trail bikes to be around between 140 and 160 of travel, um, so a mid-travel bike. Um, so I just thought that the 130, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't feel that, that it was fitting what I wanted uh, out of the travel. So. What I did was I stepped up to the SR Sun Tour Aon, I guess that's how you say it, it's A-I-O-N um, 35, um, which has 35 millimeter stanchions and it's 150 millimeters travel. It doesn't have lockout, but it's got their new um, compression damping system. I think it's called PCS. And I haven't, I haven't um, uh, done a lot of research on that yet, um, but I did want to try another Sun Tour fork um, just because this one impressed me so much. But uh, the Aion's higher on the food chain, but it's not the top of the line like the Axon or the Duralux. Um, I figured I'd just start with something a little higher on the food chain, and if I'm really, really impressed by that one, then I, I'll move on up the line. <clears throat> so that's, you know, kind of the review and impressions on this fork. Like I said, it worked great. It was buttery smooth. There were times I thought it was going to bottom out, and it didn't. Uh, no noise. Uh, performed as expected. Actually, it performed above my expectations being the price range of this fork and what it was. So to Sun Tour, if there's anybody from Sun Tour out there watching this, you know, good job. Um, I haven't used your products before, but you left a good impression. So um, for those of you who've been waiting for a review on the, on the Fazari itself, I should be getting that out in about a week or two here. Um, now that I've gotten 12 rides, uh, I think 13, I think I've been on 13 rides with it, um, all types of different terrain. Um, but I wanted to, didn't want to just do one ride and go, okay, this is, you know, how the bike, I, I wanted to make sure I gave it a, you know, a good thorough lashing and, the, and that's what I did. So look for that coming out soon and, uh, and we'll go from there.
So I hope you enjoyed this informative video. If you're out there looking for a fork that um, is, uh, you know, fits your budget and that kind of thing, and you're looking for something that's a cross country, like trail bike type, type uh, riding style, I think this would be a good choice for you. I really do. Like I said, it's it's um, it's got the the uh, inch and an eighth to inch and a half uh, tapered. It's uh, got lockout. It's an air fork. Um, you can use it on 29, 27 and a half, 15 millimeter through axle. The things you got to remember is this is a boost spaced fork, and it is a 51 millimeter offset. So if you were like me that's used to riding a, a, um, a lower offset, um, it may be something you want to consider. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're, you're, you're looking at these. Uh, so, But um, all in all, and I, like I said, they are adjustable in travel. Um, I do know I've watched a few videos from other people. You have to take the fork apart to adjust the travel. So... The part I can't tell you about is how adjustable it is. Like I said, some sites list this fork at between 120 and 140, and others between 100 and 130. I know that Fazari, and I went to their website just to make sure, they set this up to be 130 millimeter of travel. So you will have, uh, you know at least it goes to 130. Anyway, um, like I said, I, I, put, I put like six rides on this fork. I put it through its paces. I did downhill courses. I did Northwest Cup downhill courses. I did drop-offs with it. And at 2.30, even though it says for, for leisure riding and cross-country only, um, like I said, when I thought it was going to bottom out, it did not. Um, it handles everything really good. It tracks well. It, uh, you know, when you're going through, uh, especially like really rooty, rocky sections, that tries to throw your front wheel everywhere. This thing tracks straight and true. It it keeps you, it keeps you attached to the ground and lets you stay in control. Um, so, personally, um, riding a lot of forks through the years that I've been mountain biking, um, it uh, it impressed me for what it was. I mean, it really did. I can't say enough about how much it impressed me for uh, the price range. You know that this fork this fork fall. Uh, uh, blah, 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 can't talk that this fork falls into so yeah I mean if you're if you're looking for something and you're on a budget I think this is a great option I really do it has all the features of the higher end forks um, like I said I am and don't get me wrong I'm not comparing it to a Fox or a Rock Shocks or uh, a White Brothers or any of those higher end things um, I'm just saying for the price I think it's a great trail fork. I really do. Um, if you're fixing up a, a, an, an older bike, um, of course with an older bike you won't be able to use the uh, inch and a half tapered head, uh, head tube, but um, I'm just saying if you're fixing up a bike or you're getting a bike ready and you're, you're piecing it together a little at a time to be able to afford a decent trail bike, um, for under $300 this is a great option. And uh, that should about wrap it up. If you uh, have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, look, um, I put the link down there in the comments uh, on the first impressions of the Fazari. And look for the follow-up video coming out in the next two weeks on that. And uh, then I'll be doing, after the, the video on the Fazari, I'll be doing the, uh, a review of the Suntour um, Aion. I guess that's Aion or Ion. A-I-O-N. I'll be doing a uh, review of that fork as well. So this is Anza Langer. Thanks for watching. I hope I get better at this whole video thing. Um, please just leave constructive comments. Um, I, I'm not a, a uh, Facebook user or Twitter or any of that kind of stuff, so I'm not super internet savvy. Um, so if you just leave some constructive comments, might help my video. I'm working on my editing stuff. I bought some editing software. I'm trying to figure out how to use it. Um, that'd be great and look forward to more videos coming out and all my videos aren't going to be about mountain biking I backpack I canoe and kayak um, I go four-wheeling all that kind of stuff so there'll, there'll be other adventure videos um, coming out as well 
So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this answers most questions on the Sun Tour XCR34 Air. And uh, if you have any further questions, just go ahead and put them in the comments below. All right. Thank you, YouTube. You have a great day. And look out for my other videos.